We are going to do some factoring today and where you want to start is factoring out your greatest common factor. So let's talk about how you can find a greatest common factor. If you don't know off the top of your head, the biggest number that divides evenly into both 16 and 24, first make a factor tree for each number and then find the factors that are shared. So they share a two, they share another two, and they share one more two. So they have in common three factors of two. So the greatest common factor is those three factors of two, which if you multiply them is just eight. So if you're gonna factor out your greatest common factor, first find the greatest common factor of all of your terms. So if you look at these three terms, you can think of 25 as five times five, you could think of y squared as y times y. So if you look over all three terms and find a factor that they share, well, five looks tempting, but the last term doesn't have it, so you can't factor out a five. They all do have a common factor of y. So if I factor out a y, which essentially I'm undistributing it or dividing each term by it, that's going to leave you with 5y plus 25 plus x. And you can check yourself, if you multiply that back, it should equal the original, and it does. If you look at this one, the two terms that are being subtracted actually share a common factor of an entire group of a plus b. So I'm gonna factor that out, which would leave you with 20 minus 5a. And then actually, 20 minus 5a still shares a common factor that I could factor out, because 20 is five times four, so you could factor a five out of each of those, which I'm just gonna go ahead and put out in front. So I'll have five times my quantity a plus b, and then once I factor that five out, 20 divided by five is just gonna leave me with four minus one a. Some of the most common polynomials we've dealt with are quadratic polynomials that have a degree of two. If you want to determine if a quadratic will factor into two binomials, you can look at your discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac, the part that's under your radical in your quadratic formula. If that's not a perfect square, then your quadratic's not going to factor, and you know it's prime. So let's try one. The discriminant, if I look at my values for a, b, and c, a is 13, b is 26, c is negative 20. So if I do... 26 squared minus 4 times 13 times negative 20, that'll get you 1,716. If you try the square root of it, you can punch in a calculator, you can break it down. It's going to be 2 square root 429 or some funky decimal. It's not a perfect square. So if your discriminant is not a perfect square, then that means that your quadratic is not able to be factored. It's prime. So sometimes that's handy to check before you go to the work of attempting to factor. If you look at your discriminant, you can know if it's prime or not. We're gonna factor some expressions that are of quadratic in form. So if you look at these, you have a common factor of six. So always factor out your common factor first. And then if you look at what you're left with, you can factor that. You can guess and check it, or you can factor by grouping. I'm gonna guess and check it first. If you don't like this way, I'll show you another option. So if you think about multiplying two binomials back together to get that, your first two terms are gonna to have to multiply to x squared, and your last two terms are gonna to have to multiply to negative three y squared, because that's how multiplying binomials works. So I can do a little bit of guessing. The only things that multiply to x squared are x and x, so that's gotta be x and x. To multiply to negative 3y squared, I could do negative 3y and positive y, maybe, but I gotta see if my middle term works. So that would give me positive xy and a negative 3xy in the middle, which gets me negative 2xy. So my signs are backwards, but that's okay. I'm gonna flip that to a plus 3y and a negative y in my factors, and that'll give me a negative xy and a positive 3xy, which is the 2xy that I need. Another option that some of you liked in Algebra 2 was factoring by grouping. So you'd still wanna factor out that greatest common factor of six first. And then I need to find two numbers that multiply to a times c or to one times negative three. So they need to multiply to negative three. And they also need to add up to the coefficient on my middle term, 
which is just two. So this is going to be a little bit messy because I have x's and y's, but it'll still work. So if you think about values that multiply to negative three and add up to two, negative three and one gets you negative two, but positive three and negative one will work. So I'm going to rewrite my middle term as a 3xy minus a 1xy, using those coefficients I found, leaving the rest of it alone, and then I'm going to factor those four terms using grouping. So if I look at my first two terms and my last two terms and factor out my common factor, I can factor an x out of my x squared plus 3xy, which would leave me with x plus 3y. And then to make my factors match, I can factor a negative y out of my second two terms, which will leave me with another x plus 3y, which is what I wanted, because then they share that common factor of x plus 3y. So my 6 has just still been chilling out in front, and it's still going to be there. So I'll have my x plus 3y times my leftover terms of x minus y, and that's the same thing as I got by guessing and checking. All right, so sometimes if you have an even number of terms, all you can do is factor by grouping. So I did a little factoring by grouping as the, uh, one of the options on your quadratic that we did earlier. If you look at B here, there's six terms. I could break this into like three groups of two that share a common factor, or if I look at it, I can break it into two groups of three terms and factor out a common factor. You may have to play a little bit before you come up with something that works nicely for you. So if I do split this into these two groups, I could factor an A out of all the terms that are underlined in green, which would leave me with a 3A squared plus 2A minus 5. And then on my second set that's underlined in pink, I could factor out, let's see, they all share a factor of B, and also 9, 6, and 15 are all divisible by 3. So I'm going to factor out a 3B. That's going to leave you with 9 divided by 3 is 3. So I'll have your a squared, and then a 2a, and then 15 divided by 3 would be 5. Now they share that entire group of 3a squared plus 2a, so I'm going to factor that out. And then you'll be left with a second factor of a plus 3b. Now you do need to go ahead and check and see if any of those groups factors further. Like, if you look at that 3a squared plus 2a minus 5, it's quadratic, and it looks like it might factor further. So I'm, I'm going to use the discriminant and do b squared minus 4ac and see if it's a perfect square before I try to factor it. Well, that's going to give me 4 plus 60. Oh, 64 is a perfect square. Yep, it's going to factor further. So you can either find the two term numbers that multiply to negative 15, add up to 2, and factor by grouping, or you can guess and check it. I'm going to guess and check it, so 3a times a would be 3a squared to get negative 5. I'm going to try my positive 5 there and my negative 1 there. I factored a lot, so I'm really good at guessing and checking. And then, yeah, that works.